Hello, everybody. Um, I have 10 o'clock, so we'll go ahead and get started. I'm Sally Snyder. I'm the Children and Young Adult Library Services Coordinator for the Nebraska Library Commission. And today I'm going to talk about books, mostly new, that will fit the next year's summer reading program. Um, imagine your story. Um, I'm going to just shut down this other um, item. And we'll go to here. I want you to see the Nebraska Library Commission web page because if you go to the search box right here and type in the word handouts, well, even don't even have to type the whole thing, the word handouts comes up and you can find the Nebraska Library Commission handouts, which so far is all mine. <laughs> I told other people they can use it, but that's okay. So for the books I'm going to talk about today, if you want to print out of the list, it's right here under 2020 SRP handouts, SRP workshops, and you just click on that, and there's your PDF of the list. So you can print out your list now if you're able to, or you can print it out later after the um, Encompass Live is over so you don't have to write down quite so much information as you're listening is the whole idea. Okay, so we'll put that down and call up my other PowerPoint presentation, which is Imagine Your Story. Wait a minute. Now we're losing things. Okay, <laughs> that's all right. And we'll just get started. And if you want to ask questions, I do have my little question tab that's part of the um, information on your screen from uh, GoToWebinar. And you can type in your question there, or you can. Um, Type in, I have a microphone and I'll try to unmute you so you can ask your question uh, for everybody to hear. But I'm going to be talking about a number of books that um, everyone from picture books, everywhere from picture books up to teen books. And these are books that I've encountered either from getting them as review books here at the Library Commission, or I've had a couple people tell me, hey, you should add this book or that book. And I've gone to the public library and found books there. And also occasionally I buy my own copy because that's the only way to get my hands on something. So these are all books that I have encountered or people have pointed me toward. And if your favorite book isn't on this list, I'm sorry, but I read as many as I could <laughs> to get ready for this presentation. And I hope that um, you hear some titles that you're excited about and want to add to your collection. So let's get started. And we're gonna start with fiction picture books. And the first one is The Adventures of Egg Box Dragon. A dragon crafted from an egg carton is brought home and placed in the moonlight for the night that was suggested by the gardener. He comes to life and he's a bit mischievous, but he's also friendly. It turns out he is especially good at finding lost things. And eventually the queen asks him to help her. The biggest diamond from her crown was lost and it's up to Egg Box Dragon to find it. So that's quite an important assignment for him to uh, encounter. I love this one. A boy wakes up in the morning remembering today is his first day of school and his mom had told him he would be the king of kindergarten. This theme is carried throughout the book. The school bus is a big yellow carriage and his mom told him to greet everyone with a brilliant majestic smile. It's a positive upbeat approach for the first day of school by the author of Crown, an ode to the fresh cut, if you remember that title. This is a fictional look at the many people you may have encountered in your life who you did not know about or did not hear about. And they took care of things as a princess would. One is a doctor, one is a young girl who loves acting. There's a single mother, an architect, a supermarket clerk, all kinds of things. It's a variety of homes, races, and locations included. The idea is that all of us contribute to the mutual good, just as a princess would. Stuck inside on a snowy day, Alice announces that she is King Alice and decrees that they shall all write a book together about King Alice the First and the Royal Brave Knights, who's mostly her dad. Each chapter is inspired by whatever it is King Alice wants to do with her supportive parents and night baby behind her. Even though Alice is quite demanding, she is king, remember. 
This is a great look from a child's point of view at writing a book. Mom is included in the illustrations, joining in sometimes while also taking care of her baby brother. Enzo the dragon has a cold, and every time he sneezes, sparks fly, and worse. His mother tells him to cover his sneeze, but he leaves their den because it is driving him nuts. Everyone runs from him until the royal magician steps up. But his cure, plenty of fluids, plenty of rest, boring, is not what Enzo wants. Finally, after some more adventures, Enzo drinks some magical brew and he falls asleep. That is something to consider. What would happen if a dragon caught a cold? I don't want to be in his path. <laughs> a girl and a boy are dueling storytellers. The boy brings in the conflict with a dun dun dun, and the girl fixes it with her wand and a ta da. The listeners will soon chime in with the appropriate phrase. This is just too cute. This is kind of an action story. It's an interactive title that starts with a hatching egg. The book says, don't turn the page, but you do with a cute baby dragon. It says, tickle her nose, but you do. And she sneezes fire, which starts to burn the book. And so you have to handle that too. Listeners will love the dragon and the activities included in the book. Tamika loves to dance and sing and has performed before an audience before. When Mulberry Primary announces auditions for Snow White the Musical, she is ready. But then she overhears some of her schoolmates saying that she isn't right for the role. She's too tall. She's much too chubby. She is too brown. And she feels bad until at home her mother tells her, you are tall enough, chubby enough, and brown enough to be a perfect princess. Her father encourages her too. She was just enough of everything to play Snow White. Fairy's mom lets her know what to expect on her first day of school. It is very similar to what the listeners could expect with some fun fairy-like differences. For example, the school bus is a swan. And if you have a question, you should quietly raise your wand in class. It's a fun look at the first day of school, and then you can talk about what other things the young fairies might learn. This is similar to Tada, and this book contains sibling rivalry, and it is the evil princess who brought the chaos, at least a little. The magic mirror, or mom, sends them to their rooms where things are boring, so they decide to go on a quest. And the book ends right about where it began, with them at odds with each other, and uh, the um, evil princess is true to her name. She does do a couple of not so nice things to, the, to this brave knight. Maud did not look or act like the other four night dragons. They teased and bullied her, making fun of the fact that she could not fly or breathe fire. Her only friend, Mouse, encouraged her to try, but she was too scared. One day the sky was clear and the sun did not set. The other dragons had not come to blow their smoke to hide the sun. With Mouse by her side, Maud flew and blew beautiful, colorful smoke to hide the sun. Now we all have colorful sunsets, thanks to Maud. In the middle of the town is the very last castle. No one goes in or comes out and none of the town peoples want to find out why. All you ever see is that one man up there looking out over the town. You know, there could be giants or snakes or something worse in there. They don't want to find anything out. But one girl named Ib is curious and so she knocks on the door. Snakes! She runs. But then she receives an invitation. So once again, Ib went to the castle and she walked inside. What was there? A new friend. It's about taking a chance and making a connection. Georgie, a young boy, is afraid of the night. It is too dark, too quiet. Being alone makes everything worse. When his favorite book falls off the bed and hits the floor, a dragon comes out of it. The dragon whispers to him that he is afraid of the night in his book and he is running away. They joined together for a wonderful flight through the night, seeing things Georgie had never seen. And soon he realizes they are talking about different things. Nighttime night and night with a K. The dragon helps Georgie with his problem and Georgie writes a book for the dragon to live in with baseball and a friendly night. It's a reassuring story for children who are also afraid of the dark and the dragon's soothing words will help those young listeners as well. 
baby dragon is a nuisance and an annoyance at the castle. He zooms through the halls and the rooms, startling and scaring people. But then one day he finds a friend and a young girl who loves going fast and exploring, just like he does. It's a fun look at friendship and how, if you calm down a bit, you can enjoy spending time with others. This, is, this book was first published in Canada in 2010, and it is the basis for the popular TV show. I am not familiar with this TV show, but maybe some of you have seen it. Alice is not happy a unicorn showed up at her 10th birthday party. He stayed because Alice's party hat looked just like his horn. So Alice, a unicorn? She has no use for him, so she told him to go away. He didn't. He was actually quite a pest. Finally, she insulted him enough that he left. Then she was lonely. So she whispered, come back, unicorn. And he did. I love this one. Um, a horse wearing a red hat is probably just a horse who has messy hair. Or he doesn't want the sun in his eyes. Or is he trying to keep his head dry, right? Clever art shows the horse after he takes off his hat, but each time an item in the background, maybe what makes it look like he has a horn, or maybe he is a unicorn, you're never really sure. It's great um, position of the horse and the item in the background to leave you wondering. There is a hint at the end of the book. Gondra is a little dragon. Her mother is from the west and her father is from the east. Each parrot has some attributes unique to him or her and some attributes that are the same. Gondra has some attributes like her mother and some are like her father, but the important thing is Gondra is their treasure. And you, it's fun to notice the um, love that they all have for each other and that each, each dragon has their own characteristics and then some of them are combined in the, the baby dragon. This is a series of books that were first published. I can't remember where, because I only wrote down my blurb. Anyway, it's, they're great fun. And it, it says it's a Netflix original series, so I don't have Netflix, so I can't watch it. But hopefully some of you have with this one too. Hilda and her mother live in Norway or somewhere very like it. And Hilda loves to roam the wilderness to see all that, that that is there. And she encounters lots of unusual mythical or local legendary creatures. And she um, accepts them as they are. And she never wants to be mean to anybody or hurt anybody. And she wants to help them. So in the first one, she's just read about trolls. And um, she's worried about them. And she learns that bells disturb them. And they'll stay away. So she has a bell with her just in case she encounters a troll. Well, she does. But it turns out quite differently than she thought it might. And it's all, all very positive. So I have two more. Um, on the list, but there are at least five out in print now. Hilda and the Midnight Giant, you can see him in the background. And Hilda and the Bird Parade, which is when she and her mother go to town for this. She's not keen on town because there's too many people and buildings and things and, and she likes the open spaces of the wilderness. And oh, I love the beautiful colors too that are in all of these books. And it's, they're written in graphic novel format basically. Another book, Once Upon a Goat. When the king and queen have wished and hoped for a child, but nothing has occurred. When their fairy godmother stopped by, they told her they wanted to start a family. The next full moon, they looked outside and found a baby goat on the step. He causes quite a ruckus, but they keep him. And he, um, obviously, you can see the broken flower vase, etc. When the fairy godmother stops by to see the child, she realizes her mistake and she hurriedly fixes it because the king had said, we're not fussy, any kid will do when they ask for a child. And so the baby boy that they were supposed to get is with the goats. And so all of them come into the castle together. It's a fun turn at the end and a sentiment of the value of family. And also we may get better than what we think we want. When you think of tooth fairies, you probably think of children putting, putting their tooth under the pillow. It is Tate's first night of training provided by her sister May, and she starts with collecting a tooth from a young hippo. Yes, animals lose teeth too. Then there is a croc and other animals that she has to be careful and stealthy with. 
But finally, the last thing of the night is the secret to collecting the, uh, is um, getting a young girl's tooth. But she is caught by that girl. What to do? Don't worry, May has everything under control and Tate has a successful first night of training and learning about collecting teeth. At first, Goat is jealous. He was doing fine with his terrific orange bicycle zooming to school. Then Unicorn shows him up by flying to school. With each heartfelt loss of cool, Goat is more unhappy. But then one day, Unicorn smells his goat cheese pizza and he is enthralled. Unicorns do not have cheats and goat's hooves are cloven to help him stand on steep hills. Unicorns don't have that either. As Unicorn admires goat's features, goat begins to perk up and soon they are friends because they're different, but they each have their own special qualities that make them unique. Finding the good in others is a great way to go. But now there's book two. Unicorn is ready for the first day of school, but no one seems to think he's special anymore. All they do is look at and talk about rubber bands that look like different things, such as a donut. This one looks like the moon or a bicycle tire. They are, these are rubber bands are new and fantastic. So Unicorn decides he can be that too. However, he ends up irritating them. The next day he stays home from school. He feels so sad. But they missed him and they come to his house and knock on his door. He lets them in. They missed him, even though he was super annoying. It's a good lesson in friendship. This is a different book. It starts with the traditional Cinderella story in the first three chapters, but then it takes a curve. She wants to own a cake shop and the prince would like to try to be a farmer. They become friends and they pursue their dreams. And it ends with the thought, everyone can be a fairy godmother if they help someone who needs help. And anyone can be a wicked stepmother. And that Cinderella or Ella helped liberate other people from the things that held them back from being their true selves. And the other fascinating thing about this book is that it, it contains authentic silhouette art from author Rackham, who put it in the first Cinderella book that he illustrated. This is great fun. Starts with a couple of sample stories that are too short and unsatisfying. The two characters, the one that kind of bear-like and the other yellow one that's kind of rabbit-like, discuss story ideas. And the first story is, once upon a time, the end. Well, no, that's not enough story. <laughs> but the um, blue animal insists that there be a dragon in the story. The dragon is about to eat a knight when the damsel reminds him that dragons only eat noodles on Tuesdays. Dennis the dragon is unsatisfied. He eats the noodles, but he's still hungry. And the two creatures realize today is Wednesday. The book ends with the two creatures starting another story about two guys escaping from the belly of a dragon. So this is great fun as a, an introduction to the qualities of stories and maybe the listeners can finish this final story, the story that got started at the end of the book about the two fellows and the beast of a dragon. By the author of Interstellar Cinderella, this is also a space themed retelling of a fairy tale. Lex loves to read all day and all night, but when she turns 15, all her books are taken away. For the celebration of her birth, all the fairies were invited, but one declared that she was not and put a curse on Lex. Her curse is that she will open a book, get a paper cut and fall into a deep sleep. Lex goes to visit the fairy and asks her to remove the curse. But when she arrives there, the fairy refuses. Lex's dog, Prince, comes back out of the fairy's house with the invitation. Lex realizes the fairy cannot read and offers to teach her. The fairy finds a job at the library and they all read happily ever after. So a prime book for this coming summer's summer reading program. A couple of picture book nonfiction titles. This is the story of how two girls fooled first their parents and then the world with their photos of fairies. In 1917 in Cottingsley, England, a girl named Elsie took pictures of her younger cousin whose name was Frances. And also in the photo where it was a group of fairies, fairies that the girls insisted were real. And um, back then photography was newer um, and the people began to accept the, these photos as proof that fairies really were real. 
It is not, it was not until 1983 that the girls admitted, and then of course they were older women, they admitted the photos were fake, they had faked them all, but they did a terrific job for the time and place they were in. This is um, just what it says on the cover, The Legend of the Woman Warrior, but it is not the Disney version. This is a retelling of the Ballad of Mulan and contains the original ballad in Chinese on the back end papers. Brief translated text mentions that she was in the service for 12 years. Beautiful art adds to the story, but it's very straightforward about what happened. And it's short because the ballad was shorter, but it's a beautiful book. And it tells about her joining the service for her family. A couple, three beginning readers. Yes, Pete the cat is back. One night a spell was cast and even Sir Pete fell asleep while Lady Callie was playing the harp. Now she is missing. He follows the huge dragon footprints and finds a cave with the dragon and Lady Callie inside. He is prepared to attack, but it turns out the dragon only wanted to sing along with Lady Callie and all is well in the kingdom. Then there's a couple of Pinkalicious books. The first one on the list is Dragon to the Rescue. Pinkalicious and her friends are having a campfire party at Pinkalicious's house. First, they look at the stars. Peter, her brother, says he sees a dragon. The wind blows out their campfire, so Pinkalicious calls on her dragon friend Gertie to start the fire again. When they start to tell a scary story, Gertie gets frightened, so the friends must find a way to help her calm down and relax. That's all about friendship and of being together and story time around the campfire. The other book is called The Royal Tea Party. Pinkalicious, at her brother Peter's suggestion, decides to throw a party for Goldilicious, the most wonderful unicorn ever. Peter wants to, wants to help, but Pinkalicious tells him he can be the royal taster because her friends are going to help get Goldie ready. When they sit down outside for the tea party, the food looks like a, a little different than Pinkalicious was expecting. It turns out Peter made everything better so they wouldn't have boring food at the party. After royally declaring Goldie, Princess Goldilicious, Pinkalicious declares him Sir Peter the chef. So royalty all around. I have a message that someone's not getting any audio. So um, I'm not sure what to do except to exit the presentation and come back in and see if that will help you. Um, if not, this is being recorded and you can watch the, the recording later. Now we move on to early chapter books. I just found this at the bookstore the other day. It, it isn't supposed to have come out until um, December 26th. This is from the author of the popular Owl Diary series, which I came to late. Everybody else knew about Owl Diaries before me, so I feel good about knowing Unicorn Diaries right away. Rainbow Tinseltail, or Bo, Bo for short, goes to Sparkle Grove School for Unicorns. One day, a new student arrives, and Bo hopes he will be his best friend, since he doesn't have one. Each unicorn has a special power, but newbie Sonny Huckleberry doesn't know what his power is, and he doesn't know if he'll ever find out. Bo's special power is granting wishes, one a week, and he is eager to help Sunny, but Sunny is not interested in asking for help. And um, yes, they do become good friends. Book two, Bo and the Dragon Pup, will come out March 3rd of 2020. So if you have readers who like this length of book, with it has plenty of, um, every page has the text and the pictures on it. I'm sure that's similar to Owl Diaries, and um, it's a great beginning chapter book. This has 12 fairy tales in it. They're standard stories with appealing full color art by Mary Inglebright. There are a couple of differences. Cinderella has a silver slipper instead of glass, and it is Hansel and Gretel's mother, not stepmother, who innocently sends them into the wood to pick strawberries for supper, and they become lost since the birds eat the breadcrumbs. So those are the two no differences I noticed in the story from what people often tell. But again, five minute stories are very popular with kids and with parents. So this might be another good choice for your collection. Oh yes, we have the newest princess in black. This is book seven. A cloud of stinkiness is hovering over the goat pasture. So the princess in black and the goat avenger fan the smell away. It goes to princess Snapdragon's garden. 
she she then becomes flower girl and finds the smell origin back at the goat pasture and says look this is thinking up my place now so they try to send it somewhere else and over the over the course of the book every kingdom has a princess who is a superhero and they all show up together back at the at the, um, the goat pasture and finally they find that a particular monster is the smell's source and they must give him a bath that isn't easy but they work hard at it and things get better i like the fact that when initially the princess in black and the goat avengers did, uh, solution is to send the smell somewhere else well that's going to affect another group of people and so they have to come up with a solution that will be fine for everybody and i like planting that idea in kids head just because you throw something over this way doesn't mean that it's a good thing king flashy pants is hilarious king edwin is nine and he is the kind king of edwin land unfortunately the neighboring kingdom nubisonia is ruled by emperor nubison and he is evil complete with his own evil laugh Hoo, 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 hoo. The emperor wants to take over Edwin land, calling King Edwin King Flashy Pants. Nervison's plan to befriend the peasants of King Edwin's and make promises he won't keep, including dealing with a dragon, obviously a cow, cow with candles on his nose. He is off to a great start when he finds King Edwin and his closest associates have fled and cannot be found. How will Edwin defeat Nervison? Prepare for a silly and positive story that is sure to please readers of Wimpy Kid and other such stories. There is only one two-page spread without a large or small black and white illustration. So that's book one. Book two is King Flashy Pants and the Creature from Krong. In this, King Edwin announces he will defeat the creature in single combat, not understanding what that really means and that he and he alone can fight the monster. But things are better so there's a book three the toys of terror emperor nervison has discovered an evil doll at his mother's house and his conniving plans include him being nice for more than an hour it is hard but soon edwin land is taken over by a huge number of evil dolls and action figures with nervison in command or is he fiction for grades two to five We'll start with them. Um, full color graphic novel. This is book one, Estranged. A changeling fairy called Edmund and a human child were switched as babies. And now Hawthorne, an evil sorceress, has become the queen of fairy. Both worlds may depend on these two. The changeling lives with a human family and has an older six sister, Alexis, and two parents. The boy has only ever been called the human child by the former king and queen of the fae. Now that he needs help to deal with the sorceress, the only person he can think of is his changeling counterpart, Edwin. Edmund. It's a good fantasy with a fae, a dragon, magic, and a fight for the right. Book two takes place about a year later from book one. Cinder, formerly called the changeling, has been ruling for about a year, and the magic has been slowly fading something must be done but he doesn't know what then unexpectedly his exiled or turned into a rat real mother reappears and knows what is needed however she is nefariously scheming to rule the kingdom again and renew the magic in the process edmund alexis and their parents are drawn into the conflict alexis has been learning magic but she is only a beginner and their parents are lost in the fairy world a strange and inexplicable place hints are given that another volume might be in the works Aislin, Princess of Eliasin, is half fairy and half Pedrasi, and she has magic from them both. One day she was enjoying the woods when she heard some humans walking along. They should not be able to cross into her family's kingdom. The humans help her because they, they, are, they think she is a lost human, but they are not honest and are searching for a passageway so they can launch a surprise attack on their human enemies. Aislin plays along, hoping to learn something to stop them. With the help of her friends, they may be able to save the kingdom without a battle. Aislinn's embracing of her heritage and her courage while in danger will inspire young readers. Book two of two was out um, this year on November 19. Title is Power of a Princess. I haven't seen it yet. This is a full color graphic novel about Greek mythological characters. 
Nico, Lula, a Sphinx, and Buck, a Unicorn, work at Vulcan Celestial Supply Shop, and they know their stuff. But a new customer turns everything upside down. She is Aeowulf, descendant of Beowulf, and she plans to, to slay Cerebus because he's a monster. If she does, everyone in Hades can leave the underworld and come to the land of the living. It could be a zombie apocalypse. Nico and his friends are going to try to stop her. This, this story is complete in this one volume, but you can see where there might be another story about Nico and his friends uh, encountering other issues in their, in their um, celestial supply shop. So there's a possibility there could be more. And Minas, Minas 12, in her country of Aloria, the weather is controlled using dragons hatched and connected to teams. Mina is delighted when her dragon egg hatches after two years until she learns Pixit is a lightning dragon. Mina is quiet and thoughtful, and usually those controlling lightning dragons are brash and hasty. Can she work with Pixit and learn to communicate and guide him? Her family thinks no, but she goes away to lightning school and slowly makes some new friends. It is when Mina and Pixit are blown off course and injured that Mina discovers controlling the weather for Aloria can cause terrible storms for their neighbor country over the mountains. Can and should she do anything about this? This book is also good for younger teens, so it, it kind of arcs over the upper elementary into um, beginning of middle school range. Jax Nine, his name is Jackson, but he goes by Jax, has to stay with his cranky neighbor Ma, no relation, while his mother goes to court to try and keep them from being evicted. Ma is a witch and has to transport three bag and bag baby dragons to another world through a portal for their health and safety. A glitch happens and soon Jax is on his own with a bag of baby dragons. He finds help in unusual places. One of them is a talking rat and he tries his best for the dragons. Adventure, danger, and heart are included with a bit of a cliffhanger. At the end of the book, one of the baby dragons is missing because book two is The Dragon Thief. Jackson's best friend, Vic, has a younger sister, Kavita, and she is the one who swiped the baby dragon while no one was looking. It has imprinted on her, but Jax must get it back with his family. Alternating chapters are told in Jax and then Kavita's voices. The two book story is concluded, but there could be more. I hope so anyway. This is also with a full color graphic novel. Five authors, also one, one also illustrated, and three illustrators present present five fairy tales with twists. They include Ninjarella, Red Riding Hood Superhero, Super Billy Goat's Gruff, and Snow White and the Seven Ro Robots, and Hansel and Gretel and Zombies. It's a good choice for this coming summer. And I think there's going to be another volume of this with other fairy tales coming out. I did watch some of the Superhero Girls TV show a couple of times and this follows right along with that story. This is book three of six in the DC Superhero Girls graphic novel series. This is in full color. Those watching the show on TV will be familiar with the characters and setting of Superhero High. Otherwise the roll call at the beginning of the book lists most of the students and their powers. This now it's summer vacation and this year Wonder Woman is invited to visit her father and family on Mount Olympus. Soon she and her friend Bumblebee are competing with all the gods to capture, but not harm, Zeus's favorite pet, the Chimera. But it isn't long before Ares and Stripe are starting a war in Metropolis because everybody's gone to Mount Olympus. Every superhero will be needed to stop them. Friendship and supporting each other are the main themes of this series. And um, in this series, the bad guys like oh, Harley, are still pretty good in their attending school with everybody else. Pippa, or Hippolyta, a foundling or orphan, is close to 12, and she is chosen as a rider on Zephyr, one of the flying horses in the once in a hundred years race to determine a new mount for Zeus. Zeph is smaller than the other horses and easily distracted by anything. Still, Pippa is determined to train hard with him for the race, or they will both be lost. Cheating, trickery, sabotage are all present. The goal also is to prove which is stronger, love, Aphrodite, or might, Ares. This is the first in a two book series. I'm not sure when the second book will come out, but the story of the race and everything is complete in this first book. So you know something more is coming with book two. 
This is the first of a series of, I think, five books about the Unicorn Rescue Society series. New student Elliot is timid and tries to avoid trouble. We, I think they're in middle school. His new friend Uchenna is outgoing and bold. On Elliot's first day, the class is visiting the Pine Barrens of New Jersey. When they both fall behind the class on the trail, they discover a strange creature who needs their help. The small animal turns out to be a young Jersey devil, a legendary creature like Nessie in Scotland. Thus begins their first adventure with Professor Fauna, Fauna and the Secret Unicorn Society. Book two is the Basque Dragon, where the three of them go to the Basque region of Europe and are searching to rescue a dragon there that's being held captive. Book three is Sasquatch and the Muckleshoot. Eugenia, Elliot, and the professor go to Washington State to visit Mac of the Muckleshoot Indian Nation. Mac and his daughter Raven were outfits to fool sightseers into thinking they are seeing Sas Sasquatch and lead people away from the valley where the Sasquatch live. But now the Sasquatch are in danger. Book four is about the chupacabras of the um, Rio Grande. Laredo, Texas, on the US and Mexican border, a suspicious death of a cow brings a society to investigate. All the blood has been drained from the cow and no one is sure how that happened. Uchenna, Professor Fauna team up with two local children, Lupita and Mateo, and their mother, Dr. Alejandro Cervantes, to save the area's animals and find the culprit. Could it be chupacabras? And something I forgot to point out, is that Adam Gidwitz is behind this series and he wrote the first book by himself. But for the muckle shoot about the Native Americans in that area, uh, his co-author is Joseph Bruchot, someone from not that tribe, but from a Native American group. And for this one, David Bowles, who is Hispanic, helps to write this book. So he's getting his um, local authority in his book, so he's not stealing other people's culture because he brings in a co-author to help write the book. So these are lots of fun. They have illustrations occasionally throughout the book and um, working for the good of, of endangered animals is something that is fun to read about. Oh, this is hilarious. This is marked as book one. Doug Underbelly, seventh grade, is doing his best to be seen as normal and part of the middle, middle level socially in his middle school. No such luck. Two weeks ago, he was crowned as king of the mole people who live underground. And it seems weirdness just keeps on finding him. Whenever the mole people need him, one of his royal guards leaves the mark of a crown where he can see it. This happens at the most inconvenient times. Along with this is that the strangest girl in seventh grade, Magda, continuously tries to talk with him, bringing his social status down. Doug is shocked when he learns his royal advisor, Kruguthuth, more roles in your name means you're more important, is actually hoping to overthrow him. If he wasn't so evil, Doug would hand him the crown, but it would be bad for all moldom. Humor is rampant as are mud and bodily noises. Frequent black and white illustrations break up the text and add to the humor. It's, it's hilarious. Um, more serious, but still with a little humor, is the Rosewood Chronicles, this is book one, Undercover Princess. Lottie Pumpkin, 14, is thrilled that her efforts to get a scholarship to Rosewood Hall have been successful. When she arrives at the boarding school, she is surprised to find that her roommate is Ellie Wolf, who looks and acts a bit fierce, and she finds out is the crown princess of Mar Maradova. Ellie has been protected from publicity, so no one knows what she looks like, but everyone knows she is starting at the school this year. It isn't long before people believe Lottie is the princess. Her name sounds fake, Lottie Pumpkin, really? And naturally, she naturally behaves the way a princess would. That's just part of who she is. So Lottie and Ellie agree to continue the deception, but soon it is clear that someone is onto them and both Lottie and Ellie may be in danger. Book two is Princess in Practice. Their second year at Rosewood Hall finds Lottie and Ellie puzzling over the periodic strange behavior of students. Are they being poisoned? And if so, how? And what does this mean for the crown princess of Maradova? Clues point to the sinister group called Leviathan, and the girls and their friends are determined to get to the bottom of the mystery. This one ends on a cliffhanger, and book three, The Lost Princess, came out um, September 5th of this year. I haven't seen a copy of that yet. 
a full color graphic novel story retelling the myth, um, but it's kind of in 1920s um, America of the myth. In this modern version, Persephone is 15 and she is kidnapped and taken to Hades in order to lure her mother Demeter there. This is revealed later in the book, so sorry, it's a spoiler. The human, Chancellor Mithra, wants to meet her there as she is the only one who can unlock the gate to Tartarus since she is the one that locked it. And he wants the magic that's inside there. And he wants to keep everyone in Hades locked in there with limited food and limited po possibilities. And Persephone wants to help those in Hades while trying to thwart Mithra. It's an alternate story of Persephone who is trying to find out who she is and what she can contribute to the world. And the colors are muted, but it is full color graphic novel. Oh, Judy Moody came in <laughs> right now. This is book 14. Judy is working on her family tree for a school assignment when she learns that some of her family came from England. It isn't hard for her to decide that she, specifically Judy, not anybody else, is related to the queen. She plans a royal tea party for herself and her friends where she will reveal her royal connection. But in school, prior to her party, her nemesis, Jessica Finch, in presenting her family tree to the class, innocently steals all of Judy's glory by stating that Jessica and Judy are distantly related. Jessica keeps a promise to Judy and does not reveal that Judy's relative was really a royal rat catcher. After her big letdown, Judy and her friends do enjoy the tea party and have a great time. This contains the first three books of the Whatever After series, Fairest of All, If the Shoe Fits, and Sing or Swim. I found this at uh, Walmart at, in, a, in the book department, so I purchased it. I have read the first title. It's an alternate story of Snow White because, and, excuse me, the brother and sister in the book suddenly find themselves in Snow White's kingdom and accidentally warn her not to bite the poisoned apple. But now they have to figure out how to get her to meet the prince so that they can get together because since she never got poisoned, she didn't wasn't laying there waiting for the prince to come by. So that's a complication that they weren't thinking about when they warned her about the apple. And things get a, a little complicated because they think they have to do get them together before they can get back to their own home in this country. Currently, it looks like there are 13 books in the series the newest one is Spill the Beans, where the siblings visit Jack from Jack and the Beanstalk. I love this one too. There's so many books that are so fun. This is set in the Middle Ages. Max is an apprentice to his uncle Budrick, a troubadour, who is terrible. But Max wants to be a knight. Joining up with some other kids and a bumbling wizard, Max tries her best, yes, her, to fulfill the prophecy that a young lady will save the, the kingdom of Bijovia from an evil usurper, King Ghastly. Full of cartoon-like illustrations to enhance the fun. There may be more from the Midnights in the future. Seems very likely. Likely. I love this cover. Isn't that just you know eye-catching? The Knights of the Round Table have been making up stories of their more recent adventures since dragons and dark knights are few and far between. To teach them a lesson, Merlin sends them back to the time, back in time, to face dinosaurs. And they have their work cut out for them. Humorous with some danger and plenty of black and white illustrations that will appeal to readers. And they are brave and strong. Book two, the knights, well, four knights and one archer who faced dinosaurs in the first book are a bit bored with searching for the Holy Grail and with their regular life in Camelot. When an unmanned boat slowly sails by and pauses near them, Bors is the first to board. Soon enough, all five of them are sailing away and they end up on the Orkney Isles off Scotland. They now face a number of monsters several nights in a row. That same Morgaze has sent the monsters to kill the knights so that she can then kill Arthur and take over the throne. It's another adventure with danger and some humor. The frequent black and white illustrations add to the story. And will there be more in this series? I haven't heard anything, but I don't know what's next for them. This is a, um, oh, well, I like, I love this one too. Raffi Bywater is different from the other people in his small village. He can see much further. He doesn't mind the cold or the hot heat. And when upset or angry, somehow a fire can start. One day, two strangers come to the village and accuse Raffi of being dragon touched. They intend to take him away. Instead, Raffi runs away, followed by his goat, to find out who he is and why he is different. 
He meets a girl, Maud, who claims to be a dragon scientist, and they join forces to find out why most of the dragons have disappeared, and also to answer Rathi's questions. Adventure, danger, finding out who one really is, and doing the right thing are all involved in this appealing book. By this author is very um, fun. She wrote the Magic Thief series. And Rick Riordan. This, this book is taken from the Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard series. There are nine stories, one from each of the nine realms, and they are told with characters from this the, the Magnus Chase series. Thor connects the stories as he has decided to run through each of the nine worlds to log an incredible number of steps on his fitness newt. It's a fun visit with some favorite characters, some facing harder challenges than others, and it will be popular with fans of the series. This came out in 2018 as a full color graphic novel, novel also. Ten authors tell about 18, I think, stories. They're related short stories of a group of 18 neighborhood kids exploring their fantasy personas through play and creating costumes from cardboard. It's a summer, they're not in school, and so they are creating this imaginary world. Their imagination soar in the illustrations, though it is clear when reality is portrayed versus when their fantasy world is portrayed. Issues arise and are worked out, and eventually everyone is welcome, even the bully who felt left out. One boy portrays the evil sorceress with enthusiasm. That is who he is. Readers may be inspired to recreate the costumes of the kids or may develop something else all on their own. Um, this reminded me a bit of the Free to Be You and Me book and series. There are, I believe, 10 or 11 books in this series. The first one is Phoebe and Her Unicorn, the pink covered one. It's a collection of the author illustrator syndicated column, and these will appeal to middle grade unicorn fans. Phoebe skipped a stone in the lake and it accidentally hit a unicorn who was trapped gazing at her own reflection because she is so beautiful. In gratitude for startling her out of her days, the unicorn, Marigold Heavenly Nostrils, grants Phoebe a wish. The wish is for Marigold to be Phoebe's best friend. It is a good combination. Marigold is snarky and rather stuck up and Phoebe is innocent and a bit clueless about the mean girl at school who is bugging her and other things. Each page is usually four comic panels in color with a complete um, story or joke, but they combine to carry the story forward. There are, oh yeah, I say there are 10 books in the series so far, and I've listed the first four on your list there. They can be read out of order. Another title is coming out on in April called Camping with Unicorns. So I think these, you can read them in order, but it's not important. You could just pick up a couple and put them in your collection and see how they do. Whether you want all of them, I don't know, but um, a couple would, would uh, not need to be connected. They're, they're um, pretty much complete in and of themselves. Two books from India of traditional folk tales are brought together in this volume containing a total of eight wisdom stories. In them, Prince, Prince Vera and Suku, his best friend, occasionally step in for the king to listen to complaints and disagreements among their subjects. Some of the stories may be familiar, familiar to adults, but will intrigue those new to the logic used by the prince. For example, one merchant charged a poor man for enjoying the aroma of his delicious baked goods. and another, a man sells his neighbor a well, but did not include the water. Compassion and empathy are em emphasized and some humor is included as well. Stylized black and gray illustrations throughout add to the stories, and there are only two two-page spreads without any art. This is a full color graphic novel also. Princess Max, Maxine, is turning 10, which is when her fairy godmother, Amber, will bestow a special gift upon her. She is appalled when the gift she receives is the power of every princess in the known universe. She doesn't want that. She wants to be to, she wants to be a detective, not to do excellent needlepoint or whatever. But when her younger brother, Prince Robert VI, Fobbs, is kidnapped, Max, now mega princess, and Justine, her trusty pony, she calls jerk pony, are on the case. They travel through various lands, such as Tiny Kingdom and Underwater Kingdom, searching for her brother and those who took him. The princess's new powers come in handy a few, handy a few times, but will she be able to find Fobbs? This is a compilation of five shorter books. So use the ISBN to be sure you're getting the, the one that you want. This is the one that has the full story in it all collected in one volume. So the ISBN will get you there. 
some nonfiction for grades two to five or so. This is beautiful, beautifully illustrated. 10 classic Scottish tales with large or small full color illustrations on most of the two page spreads. Some stories will be familiar like the wee bannock, think gingerbread man, while others may be new to the reader. That's, uh, so if you're looking for a, a, a fairy tale collection, this is one of so many, many out there, but it's beautiful. This is a follow up to I Am Pan, which I have at the end of the list um, in the older books section. This retells some of the stories of the Greek god, Hermes. He was the Greek god of sports, business, sleep, liars, thieves, and mischief, and the messenger of the gods. But he also is very accepting of everybody. He's honest, he's straightforward, and people turn to him when they want a truthful answer. Using a cartoon art style and a humorous approach to Hermes and his world, this will inform and entertain. Each two-page spread has one or more illustrations and information on animals or ancient histories, such as those by Theseus from 2300 years ago that led to people believing unicorns were real. It covers a variety of topics, including actual one-horned animals, the popularity of the narwhal horn, thought to come from a unicorn, mythical creatures from just different lands, and the famous medieval tapestries now housed in New York. And it does include a recipe for unicorn poop bark. I have not fixed it or tried it, but you can go, go right ahead if you're interested. Let us know how it turned out. <laughs> and a good craft book, instructions for a variety of crafts directed at children, plenty to choose from as a cover demonstrates items from shields, coats of arms, castle towers that could hold popcorn that caught my attention and some games that can be played or included. I have looked through this book, but I have not tried any of the crafts, um, but it's a, it's a good choice. Some teen titles, we'll get into this fiction for younger teens. I was feeling guilty because I hadn't read any more of the Rick Riordan Presents series um, imprint for the publisher. So I, I grabbed a couple from the library. This, this one is the Storm Runner. Zane Obispo, 13, has one leg shorter than the other, so he walks with a cane and is bullied. But he is fascinated with the volcano near his backyard, just out in the desert. He, he and his dog, Rosie, who is his best friend, best and only friend, explore around the volcano quite frequently. Um, Rosie is his best friend until Brooks comes along. Things soon go strange after that. Zane has to, has to open the prison where our Apuch, the Mayan god of death, darkness, and destruction, has been held for centuries, or Brooks will die. It turns out the other Mayan gods are angry about this and they are looking for whoever said Apuch free. Not a good thing. There's plenty of action, some self-doubt, Zane discovering who he is, and humor combined for an amazing story. Book two, The Fire Keeper is out now. I haven't read or seen this one yet. But this was um, good storytelling as Rick Riordan's books are. Um, J.C. Cervantes has done an excellent job of pulling the reader into the story and caring about Zane and his friends. Another book um, in this imprint is Tristan Strong, Punches a Hole in the Sky. Tristan is in seventh grade, Chicago. He recently lost his best friend, Eddie, in a school bus, bus accident and is spent, sent to spend a month in Alabama on his grandparents' farm. The first night there, strange things begin to happen. Something that looks like a doll has stolen Eddie's journal and Tristan chases after it. He falls through the sky and lands in a different world that has John Henry, High John the Conqueror, Br'er Rabbit, and Br'er Fox in it. It is up to Tristan to lure Anansi from wherever he is hiding so he can fix the hole in the sky. Tristan learns to stand up for his friends and fight with them, and he is also named an Anasasum, a storyteller, and his special abilities with it may save the day. This one is marked as book one. I don't know what book two is. It might be avail not available yet, but there's obviously going to be one since this is book one. This is also a full color graphic novel. Margaret came to the island as an infant. She loves it there with the nuns and willingly does her chores and lessons. The only people living on the island are the nuns, their, their helpers like their cook and the kitchen helper and, um, and Margaret and the ship comes twice a year to get, bring them supplies. 
One day, everything changes. changes. The former queen, Eleanor of Albion, is now in exile on the island. And Margaret asks each nun in turn how they came to the island, only to discover that most of them were also exiled by Queen Catherine due to the actions or suspected actions of their husbands or families. Margaret is also in exile, a shock to her when she learns it. Now she must work her way through intrigue, how people with, with power behave and decide her future along with that of her friends, the nuns and the workers of the island. The story is obviously loosely based on the early history of England's Queen Elizabeth I and Mary, Queen of Scots. This is likely the first of a series based on the comment on page 394 at the very back of the book. And the paperback of this is due out on May 12th of 2020, if you want to wait for the paperback. This book is very heavy, it's, but it's a beautiful art and a, a really intriguing story. Once Upon a Con, book one, Con, as in Excelsicon, an annual gathering to celebrate the fictional TV series Starfield, as well as Star Wars, Star Trek, and many other existing and fictional movie and TV franchises. And it is obviously a play on Cinderella. The setting is Atlanta. Elle is a daughter of the founder of the Celsicon. He passed away a couple years ago, and now she must do whatever her stepmother or stepsisters demand. She hopes to win the costume contest at the event in order to win a trip to California and get out of there. Darian Freeman will play Prince Carmendor in the movie version of Starfield. People are not happy about this choice. Jessica Stone will play Princess Amara. Um, Elle gets a, has a job on the uh, bus here, the Magic Pumpkin. And she works with her new friend Sage, who loves to have green hair. It's a good adventure. It's a, a good play on Cinderella, and it's entertaining. And of course, there's a little romance in there, too. Book two is The Princess and the Fangirl Girl. This is a play on the prince and the pauper. It is a year later and a Celsa Khan is meeting again. We learn more about a few characters from book one and we meet a few new people too. It's still fun and romantic and um, people are, are finding out who they are as well. Bookish and the Beast is the third and final book in the series and it will be out in June 16th of 2020. This is a full color graphic novel. Pipenia or Poppy is the illegitimate daughter and only living child of the recently deceased king. Her uncle takes the throne and is happy to have her in his court and she is happy, um, not interested in taking power. She wants to just have her life as it is now. But someone is trying to kill her and her sworn protector, one of the sleepless guards her. The sleepless, as it sounds, never sleep. They have taken an oath and they Stay awake. He's been awake for three years now, guarding Poppy. Court intrigue, puzzling out the possible murderer and concern over what will happen to her sleepless protector, Cyrenic, when sleep finally overtakes him, give quite a puzzle to the reader. Volume two, Sleepless, is again a full color graphic novel and it completes the story because at the end of book one, um, Poppy had released Cyrenic from his vow to protect her and he immediately fell asleep. There's some, a couple books as fiction for older readers, just a couple. Stepsister. One of Cinderella's stepsisters, Isabella, cut off her two toes in order to fit the glass slipper, but blood revealed her deception. Now she and her sister are reviled in town and they have very little. To complicate Isabella's life, the trickster Chance has stolen her life's map from the fates and he is determined to change her path. At the same time, Tanaquil, a fairy queen, has given her the task of finding the missing pieces of her heart. A war is on the way and Isabella might be able to alter its course if she can determine the right thing to do. It all sounds complicated, but it flows together quite well. This is about Mulan again, but this is a fictional story. It's a novel. Mulan is 18 at the start of the book. She has been dressing, walking and, act, walking, and acting like a boy in public since she was very young. Her father has been training her for most of her life to prepare her for the duel she will fight for her family at a designated time. The duel is looming when it is suddenly postponed due to the mandatory recruitment of one man per family that occurs throughout the kingdom. Mulan joins and is soon a part of the princeling's elite team. They go on a secret trip to the foothills and in their first skirmish with bandits, Mulan, even with her excellent training, freezes because her life has never been in real danger before. 
Soon the team is involved in intrigue, more danger, and spying to discover the threat to the land. The setting, traditions, and principles of the time are well woven into the plot, and there's lots of action. It's a beautifully reimagined story of Mulan. And that is the end of my list. Thank you. I hope that you've heard of some titles that will be interesting to you. And I hope that um, if you run across some titles that you think that I should look at, please let me know. Please send me an email telling me about the books. Uh, as I said, there are a list of some other titles after the, the um, Mulan title at the end of the list I just talked about. These are ones that, um, you know, there's a uh, I just, Geronimo Stilton title that fits the category. So um, if you don't have that one, or there, I think it's part of a set of seven or eight, you could look into that if they're popular at your library and um, other titles that might work for you. And that's the end of this um, Encompass Live. I thank you for attending. If you're attending via the archived program, thank you for watching that. And um, I hope you have a happy new year. There are, um, next week, we'll, the program will again be on a Wednesday, like it's normally on that. And um, thank you. <laughs>